Have you recently lost a lot of weight and have plateaued? Watch this. Our first caller is Marie from Missouri. Hey, Marie, how can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, it's really nice to meet you guys. I've been uh, listening to you guys for uh, quite some time in late December, so it's kind of exciting to uh, finally get to meet you guys. Cool. All uh, right. <laughs> um, so my question is, um, after massive weight loss and maintaining a uh, weight for several months, when is it optimal to go into another cut to lose the last, uh, 20 ish pounds? I kind of want to give you guys a backstory. Um, I'm 32, uh, a four or five, five, four and a half female who lost approximately 95 pounds naturally in about a year and four months. I struggled with weight all my life, uh, throughout my childhood and as an adult, because of the lack of knowledge around nutrition and fitness, uh, I lost weight in the past so I could join the military, but I gained it back once I got out because it wasn't sustainable. Uh, I wasn't focused on the uh, long-term approach. It was just a short-term goal, goal being that I wanted to get in the military, and that meant getting down to a certain weight. Uh, I started my weight loss journey in March of 2020, once again at my heaviest weight at 250, 250 pounds. This time around, I focus on taking the long-term approach by listening to you guys, uh, Lane Norton and Jordan Syatt. I also research studies on people who maintain weight loss and methods they use to keep the weight off. Uh, one study uh, I read during my weight loss journey was the National Weight Control Registry. And uh, I uh, later in my weight loss journey, I made it a goal to join. Uh, not long ago, I received the application from them to join the registry and since uh, applied. Uh, however, towards the beginning of my journey, I did start to take the wrong approach to uh, to my fitness um, uh, weight loss journey by cutting my calories to like 1,200 and just walking. So I didn't know uh, what my maintenance calories were exactly at 250 pounds. But I did later increase my intake and started strength training as I learned the error of my ways. I focused on learning the nutritional value of food in order to properly fuel my body, uh, learn to listen to my body's hunger signals, digestion signals, and how to respond to certain foods. I track my caloric intake and my activity expenditure and weight daily on Excel spreadsheet in order to, uh, to get an average. However, I only use the information as a tool to know that I am staying on track. Uh, I eventually hired a certified personal trainer after maintaining a weight loss of 80 pounds for a couple months at 2,500 calories. Uh, he helped me lose 15 pounds. With his guidance, I was able to successfully reverse after my cut. Uh, when I ended my cut in July in 2020, uh, 2021, I was the same weight I am now, about 155 pounds and roughly 27% body fat. Uh, maintenance calories were 2,300. Over the last seven months, I've been able to maintain my current weight, lose body fat now, I'm at 22%, and my maintenance calories are 2,600. I currently train four to five days a week, and I want to get down to 15% body fat, about, 145, uh, about 140 pounds, uh, although weight isn't really my concern. It is really my body fat percentage. My coach says he we could do a cut in April because um, he wanted me to maintain for a while, which I agreed. Uh, and I'm wondering if I should wait a year before attempting another cut. And if so, what is y'all's take on it? Are you are you looking for a job or you want help? I feel like you're qualified enough to yeah. come over here and work with us, man. I think you're doing uh, incredible. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you're, you're on track. You're, 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 on, you're, oh, you're phenomenal. Twenty two percent body fat, twenty six hundred maintenance calories on a five four and a half woman is incredible. Yeah. You, now you can cut based off the numbers. The only thing I would I would caution you on would be the, the any of the any mental or psychological uh, challenges you may have with this whole process. Because as far as calories are concerned, as far as what you're doing with your workouts, your body fat percentage, that's all good. The only thing, and I'm not saying this is you, okay? So I'm just saying this is something you want to ask yourself. Uh, because you've gone through this process, you've got a spreadsheet, you're counting everything. If you feel like you're maybe on the side of a little bit too neurotic or too stressed out about everything, then you might want to wait a little longer. But if that's not an issue, then everything else looks good. Yeah, I would say I, go for the cut. Based off of what you're, what I'm reading and what you just shared, um, I think you're in an incredibly healthy place to do whatever the hell you want. Um, I think you could maintain and, and and be a completely healthy, strong, and fit and in a great, great place. If you want to get shredded and you want to get lean, I think you're in a very healthy place calorie-wise to cut calories. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess the only thing I would just caution you as you do that, is, and it sounds like you've already done this though, uh, is to you know not dramatically cut the calories to like twelve hundred or something ridiculous. You just barely got to cut down a little bit, create a little bit more movement, and uh, maybe change up some programming or increase intensity or volume. And 
I think you're in a phenomenal place to do whatever now, the hell you want. Now, 15% is pretty lean for a woman. It's really lean. Why do you want to get down to 15%? I kind of want to see how far it could take my body, like where my body's not fighting me. Um, but I also want to try to compete in a bodybuilding show later on. And I want to be like, you know, as lean as I can. But then when I diet down to a show, it's not going to be like, you know, a drastic cut. Love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this, Marie, because uh, you said you, you struggled with weight as a kid and stuff growing up. Do, do you do you work? Do you have any body image issues or do you have any issues with, you know, uh, fears of gaining the weight back or any body dysmorphia? Uh, at first, I did have fear of like gaining the weight back. Um, I, I honestly thought when I was reversing that I was going to like try to cut my calories and like stay low calorie. But I had to really work through my mindset of that. You know, I, I had the tools I learned and, you know, that I could, I have, I'm, like I can maintain it. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah. Cause, cause competing in bodybuilding that if you have any, any body dysmorphia, it's going to blow it way up. So I don't care who you are. If you have any issues with that at all, it's going to make it uh, much bigger. So prepare yourself for that. And that, that's the only thing that's the only honest to God, because everything else is done. You're so good. Your metabolism looks good. Everything looks good. That would be the only thing to consider, but don't just think it's a small thing. If that's some, if if you got, if you're on, and you don't have to tell us on the show, but if you're honest with yourself, you're like, oh, you know what, that might not be good for me to stand on stage and get judged by how I look and go through that whole process, and that might take me ten steps back psychologically or mentally. Then I said I would say don't do it. Uh, I, but if there's no issues there, then everything else looks good. I mean, I know we've only known each other for about three minutes, but I feel like from just listening to you tell your story and the the things that you've overcome, and I, I think you have the absolute right mindset. Uh, even the idea of you kind of pushing your body to getting leaner than you've ever been before you even decide to book a show, I think is smart. I think that. Um, you should do that. And I think you're at a great place calorie wise. I think you understand the value of tracking, but also not becoming, uh, addicted to that. Uh, yeah, you, you sound from what, from what I'm hearing right now as a, a perfect person to play with this and, and, yeah. and go for it. And I think it's a, a, a total fine goal. I think you're, I, I love people that I think are in a good place to do this. So you learn a lot about your body, uh, taking it to an extreme level of leanness. And I think that there's, there is tremendous value for the right person to do that, and you sound very qualified to do that. Yeah, and I'm not gonna I'm gonna play devil's advocate. All right, Marie, is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> are, you, are you an Are you an analytical person? Do you do you do you Are you a numbers person and a follow you know systems and organized type things type of person? Yeah, it's funny you say that. Yeah, I am. I in the government and the military, I used to do budgets and stuff like that. So okay. spreadsheets. <laughs> Okay. Now, now here's Very, yeah. I could tell. So now here's why. Here's here's where I'm going to play devil's advocate. Sometimes you get people like you, who the way that they handle their issues is they dive deep into the numbers and the statistics and they just follow them. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but what it does do is it takes the other issues that you might not be addressing and it buries them, and they can resurface. So I know I sound like a you know like I'm I'm uh, you know I'm the turd in the punch bowl here, but what I'm trying to say basically is. What I'm saying, I want you to consider very strongly because uh, I've seen this happen before where someone's in a great place, then they go do a show and it sets them back really bad. So consider that, okay? So and this, I can't answer this for you. This is something you have to be very honest with yourself. And if you have a tendency to you know, either hide or escape into the numbers and just be a numbers person like a robot, that eventually will not work. Eventually it'll come out. So just consider that, okay? Now, as far as workouts are concerned, um, you're, I mean, MAPS Aesthetic would be wonderful for you, I, I would think. Do you follow any of our programs? Actually, I want to. Um, I Right now, I actually do the same training program as my husband. He's actually going to go into a show in April. Cool. Um, so I've been following, even though my, the coach, because I use my coach for nutrition, really, um, even though he does suggest, you know, we do different workouts or whatever, but I do do the ones, but I modified some things, you know, to my own body. Um but yeah, I did look into your guys' programs because it was something me and him kind of wanted to do after uh, his show. Oh, cool. Well, I'll send you Maps Aesthetic. I think that would be great for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you so much, guys. I do really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. Well, so, I mean, she's doing she's she's doing everything right. Yeah. The, the reason why I'm, I'm like again, I was so cautious and being the downer on this whole thing <laughs> is because uh, well, it's fair. I think it's yeah. a fair it, assessment. Yeah, because. She, I mean, she's a couple things she said early on, which is I dealt with this growing up as a kid. Mm -hmm. 
you don't erase that because you follow a plan and you follow it right. And you don't necessarily erase that. And we, and I've worked with people like this before where they hide and escape into the numbers. Yeah. And uh, that doesn't mean that, you know, what I'm saying isn't an issue. And so, and then they can, it can come out and rear its ugly head sometimes. And it sometimes looks like I'm in and I'm on and I'm following the numbers and I'm off. I'm not doing anything at all. So that's why I want to caution, and I'm always going to be cautionary with people who yeah. lose weight and then want to do a show. It's like, ooh, that's that's always tough for me. Well, you know? Especially if they've never done it before. Yeah, and yeah, like having like mentally preparing yourself for that going into it, I think is great. But yeah, her mentality just seems like it's on on point. Oh, and, yeah. and to be able to get to a place where you challenge your body, you know, I think it's a healthy thing to pursue. But again, that specific sport, there's just a lot there that it's going to, you know, bring up and expose. Yeah, but I mean, 2,600 calories. Oh, her man. Height and body she's, fat a, and she's doing great. No, she's, uh, I mean, I think you're right. I think that sometimes we're the, we're the best at selling ourselves yeah, totally. right, on like how good I am and how recovered and yeah. I don't have any issues. Right. So I, I definitely uh, agree with that caution, right. To, but everything she did say, you know, so whether she's just she's doing, doing the right stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. she's done. All, I mean, she even, I don't know if you heard her when she went on her little spiel, but she even talked about how she's, you know, she tracked just for using that as a thing to to look back at, but she's primarily been intuitively eating yeah, and wasn't stuck there. Yeah. Trying to listen to her body. And, and, and so yeah. she's done these uh, cuts and bulks and cuts and bulks and reverse dieted, got her up to a place at yeah. 2,600 calories. Oh yeah. She's definitely 20, following the playbook. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I think that, um, uh, I think she would be uh, she would be a fun client to to take to this uh, to take to this level and, and see how she does. And uh, I mean, I like where she's at. Not many girls that want to get on stage and compete that I've ever met that are as small as she is, five four, and eating twenty six hundred calories. And it, that's she's at the place I would always want to take my clients before I would yeah. allow them to get on stage is, you know, many of the ones that would hire me would be at the 1500 calorie, 1700 calorie yeah. mark. And then they, and they have body fat to lose. And they're like, yeah, I want to get ready for a show. And I'm like, well, probably not a good idea for you, but yeah, I like where she's at. And I, I think it'd be interesting to see how she does over the next year. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe.